Hey everyone, thanks for joining me this week for this episode of Update to Date. I'm your host, Andrew, and we're going to be going over a few articles that I found interesting over this past week. So the first article we're going to be starting off this week is going to be a Nintendo emulator. Not just any Nintendo emulator. This is going to be a Nintendo emulator that you can put and use on your Xbox One. Now, technically, it's not on your Xbox One. It's through the Microsoft Store through your Windows 10. And you can find it on there if you search WIN64, the letter E, 10. It's $10 on the Microsoft Store, so you can purchase it. It's not free. Uh... It's also not by Nintendo, but Microsoft apparently approved it, and I guess they have the proper licensing to do so. And since it's available on Windows 10, you clearly have availability to use it on your Xbox One. And don't forget this app is also available for your PC, mobile, holographic slash VR headsets, and hub. Now just a note that this does not come with any ROMs already with it. You have to either use it from your personal library or somehow obtain a ROM for the game of some form of alternative means, and then you have to install it or have it on the device that you want to use it on. But within the case of your Xbox One, I'm assuming you just leave it on your PC and not actually transfer it to the actual physical console, you can just use it from there. But if it comes to your mobile device, you have to again transfer it to the mobile device and then have it on there so you can actually play it. But the biggest question is, is Nintendo okay with all of this? You have the Nintendo Wii, the Nintendo Wii U, you have the Nintendo 3DS. Now, with this emulator being available for purchase on the Microsoft Store and available to be played on your Xbox One, I'm not sure how they're going to feel if people are just buying this emulator, downloading their ROMs, and not actually going out and purchasing it on their outlets and consoles that they have, such as their mobile devices or their consoles. So it'll be interesting to see over the next couple of weeks if Nintendo releases any information or a statement about the simulator coming about, solely on the fact that you can play all their games that if you have the availability to download for the Nintendo N64, that you can play it on your Xbox One instead of on their actual consoles. So the second article this week is going to be about the PlayStation VR and its compatibility. So now that the PlayStation VR is officially coming out and people are actually getting their hands on it, people are discovering a few little secret traits with the PlayStation VR. More specifically, that the PlayStation VR is actually capable of functioning with your PC and other consoles. Now, this is not actually fully working with the headset. This is just actually working with the console as in displaying what you can actually see through the headset, not just through the PlayStation. Basically, the PlayStation VR headset is actually being able to take in just any regular HDMI signal and be able to display it in the cinematic mode. Now inside the cinematic mode, of course, it's just a far, it looks like a far out screen, like in a movie theater, and it's displaying the content that way. Now, let's not say it's actually going to work with the uh, gyro system or anything with where you're using the axis of the up, down, left, right when you're moving your head. But, I mean, if you still want to, I mean, you can still plug in any HDMI into the headset, such as your Xbox One or even just your regular Blu-ray player if you want to watch a movie and still be able to use the headset. So even though you don't get full support with the PlayStation VR with other consoles like the Xbox One or the Wii, you can still have the availability of actually plugging it into the headset and still being able to sit on your couch and be able to view everything with it. So it's not completely useless with other consoles. It's just not the full blown move your head, tilt it up and down axis that you get when you actually use it with the PlayStation VR games. Hopefully, eventually, there either might be a mod for your PC that somebody might create, or maybe they might have official support, at least for PCs, later on in the future. So the last article I got for you guys this week is actually going to be about the Steam Link and the fusion with Samsung TVs. For you guys out there who don't know, Sony has implemented an availability to where you can stream your PlayStation product to your Sony TV with their PlayStation Now. Well, it looks like Samsung is trying to compete with that while teaming up with Valve with Steam. What looks like Samsung is wanting to do is they want to implement a small piece of technology that's going to be running the Steam OS on it to where you can stream from your PC to your smart TV of your Samsung choosing and actually stream your games from your Steam library like you can with the Steam Link. Now also, for the few people who don't know, the Steam Link is a little device that's about yay big and you can actually hook it up to your TV and it uses uh, streaming through your local network to where it uses your PC, such as the one behind me 
and you can stream it straight to the link. And you can also use your Steam controller to go along with that. And so you can sit in your living room instead of being in here with all this fancy cool stuff. You can be out in your living room and interacting with humans for real. But one last thing to know to go along with that, you still do need to have a Steam controller to go along with it. Seeing it's the Steam product, there's no physical way to plug in anything to it, but it's embedded into the TV, so you still do need to buy the Steam controller to go along with it to have proper support. But aside from that, you should be able to just buy your new Samsung TV that is advertised with having the Steam capability and hook it up to your network, and you should be A-OK -okay to go. Hey everyone, thanks for watching this episode of Update to Date. If you want to find any of these links and articles that I've been talking about in this video, all the links will be down in the description below. And if you liked any of these articles or found them interesting, don't forget to hit that like button. It really helps us out. And don't forget to check out some of our other episodes of Update to Date or Video Game Weapons in History if you want to check out a little bit of knowledge about video games and where these guns started inside the game developing world. And I'm your host, Andrew, and don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.